part of the problem is that it's such an abstract concept to try to talk about the purpose of life in general. Now, certainly there is some benefit to trying to see what is common across all of the biodiversity that we can see in life. There does seem to be a great range of kinds of organisms. I mean, we have everything from, you know, there's sea coral, there are, uh, there's vegetation here on the land, there are animals, there's birds, there are humans. Uh, even though we can speak of organisms broadly and characterize all of that, include insects in there, there does seem to be as I think is rightly pointed out, a kind of common fact of all of this, which is the ability to replicate itself. And this capacity for replication is admittedly a common purpose. The question is, does that suffice in helping us understand the nature of both purpose in general and human purposes? Jamaka Highwater, in his book The Primal Mind, he suggests that human life and humanity is best understood not simply through what is common to all cultures. That is, we don't want to look at lots of different cultures and then look for the common thread in it all and think by doing so we best understood humanity. He says, no, humanity is best understood by trying to understand the range of the cultural differences. It's the, the very range of the differences that when we see how differently people have lived, how differently people have died, we see what, what it means to be human. I think the same thing could be said about biodiversity. Now, I really do believe that there is a problem, and I, I would implicate myself in this as well, in talking about animals. Just the word animals or organisms. It's too inclusive. It's too abstract. It's too broad. We don't really know what we're talking about. That is, it's almost like you're using the word thing. There's just too much diversity that could be fit within that category, and there does seem to be you know, a, a kind of understanding when we say, well, what's common to all animals? Well, we can say replication. We say all organisms. That it has this common purpose of replication. But I think what gets missed here is the kinds of purposes that emerge at different levels uh, of the phylogenic scale. And so if we take just, for example, uh, something like plants, right? When I look around, I see plants. I see a dandelion out on the, on the grass. The dandelion or the plant, it doesn't have to have organismal anxiety over acquisition of food. It doesn't have to fear flight from predators. It is attached to the world in a certain way that its purpose of replication is served in a certain way, but the way that that function gets served, that is, the, the ability to replicate gets served at higher functions, actually becomes chancier or riskier, right? So animals, just as an example, they, they need to rove to gather the food that they need to live. They need to flee predators and can be aware of predators and feel hunted in a way that vegetative life just doesn't seem uh, to have that. I think the same could be said as we move to humanity, that humanity seems to open a kind of purpose. Now, now, does each organism have its own realm, its own world, its own sense of space and time, its own set of purposes? Yes, maybe. I don't want to suggest that uh, other organisms are not sophisticated or intelligent, are not rich in the way they're capacitated to interact with their environment and to, to, I guess, survive and thrive in their environment. But I, I do want to get at the kinds of purposes that seem to be uniquely human. Now, whether or not they are out in nature, I don't think is really the haggle in the rest of nature or find in the, uh, you know, the rest of the animal kingdom. That, to me, isn't really the significant haggle. The, the more significant haggle is that we do seem to have purposes like drama, like narrative that don't necessarily seem to be that useful. We have uh, things like beauty. We make art, right? To say that part of the purpose of humanity is to, to open in awe and wonder to the cosmos, that it ha is become one of the purpose, one of the purposes of humanity. 
that he, one of the purposes of humanity is self-expression. And it's also artistic creation. And that these are capacities which nature itself, through evolutionary process, has made possible. Evolution has slowly evolved ranges of purpose and that as much as it may be true that there is a common purpose at the beginning or shared by all organisms which is the ability to replicate that may not be the best way to understand human purposes more broadly or even the purpose of life more broadly it could be that there are multiple purposes depending upon the scale of life that we're talking about and the common purpose isn't necessarily the defining or most insightful purpose. It could be that the diversity of purposes is part of what we need to appreciate in order to understand what humanity is. That somehow nature has made possible through evolution the possibility of inventing purposes, of creating non survival related purposes everything from sexual practices that have no survival value right, we could talk about those people who choose celibacy people who choose uh, abstinence uh, people who choose to have a visectomy or use birth control people choose to have no children imagine the beauty that goes into a simple thing like a piece of silverware if I make a beautiful fork the fork has a useful value, and that use value in some way serves a purpose, right? And now maybe an extended purpose of making me look civilized. I could just feed with my hands, but I actually I use the fork to make me look civilized, which has some sort of purpose. But when I get to the beauty of it, beauty is often defined as uselessness. That's how you can sort of differentiate function from aesthetics, is that the aesthetics don't have a di distinct function. Uh, again, you can overstate that. I don't want to get radical on that. But I think the, the, purpose, the point here is that there do seem to be purposes, the purpose of self-expression and the creation of beauty and the contemplation of order. These kinds of phenomena at least exist in humanity. Now, do they exist in other parts of the world? I don't know. I think they may. They may be, you know, could other creatures have some sort of aesthetic uh, capacities? Whether they do or they don't, I know at least that it exists in humans, and I think humans are a part of nature, so nature itself seems to have made possible something like kinds of purposes that are more than the purpose of survival.